Back with Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, 1890 German campaign. <clears throat> Last episode, we designed and built our battleship. I'm going to try to do this uh, with nothing but battleships. See how that goes with the lousy accuracy and low, almost no, tech of the 1890 era. We built eight of these things. We've got two more building. And currently, they are all stationed at Emden on the North Sea. Kind of a typical uh, budget philosophy, like I've done in previous campaigns. Maxing out crew training, and for now, maxing out transport capacity. <laughs> Didn't see anything in the that was close in the research tree that I wanted to go try to grab before you know in the early stage of the campaign so I've got tech at zero I am however uh, expanding shipyard about uh, not about but a thousand tons per increment which takes a few months so that as the campaign goes on, we'll be building uh, not higher tech, but slightly larger pre-dreadnought battleships as we go along. And actually, one thing I forgot to check last episode is on this hull, we can go up to 11,750 tons. So there's going to be a couple of more increments of adding shipyard capacity uh, after this. Pending how long the campaign goes, of course. Okay, let's head on into February. And we've already got a pretty significant battle. And this is one thing that the, the game does when you just have nothing but capital ships is uh, you know they send a whole bunch of <laughs> cruisers and destroyers or in this case torpedo boats uh, to gang up on the battleship and who knows this might be well let's just see what happens Okay, first things first. We're slower. If we head right into them, that's going to become Torpedo Junction real fast. And all, and all those little guns will add up and start doing some real damage. So, first thing to do is turn and head the other direction. Not exactly running away, just slowing down the closure rate. And trying to keep it so that we're really only dealing with two or three ships at a time and not letting a whole bunch of them get real close and start throwing torpedoes at us. Nope, you're gonna have to come to me. I'm going to go save on the 11 inch. I mean, the accuracy is so bad, and, and there's so there's eventually going to be so many targets. So we kind of have to wait for them to get close. I mean, the accuracy is bad on the 3 inch too, but we got a lot of ammo for those.
I think HE is all we need against light cruisers and torpedo boats. Later on, whenever we start firing at a heavy cruiser, maybe we'll switch to AP. Maybe. There we go. I'm actually going to turn the 11 inch off. I don't want to burn any more 11 inch rounds on a torpedo boat. Well, maybe I will. I'd prefer for the 3 inch to just kind of wear them down. I mean, we're slow at 17 knots, but these light cruisers are only 17 and a half. Torpedo boat 23, it's a 5 knot closure rate if he were going directly at me, which he kind of is. He's matching my course for the moment. I mean, that's 23 knot is his top speed. He's only going 16 at the moment. It's actually slower than me. Which means he's already neutralized as a torpedo threat. So there really is no need to spend more 11 inch ammo on him. Yeah, the accuracy is pretty bad in 1890. <laughs> Something else back here. It's in the light cruiser division. I assume that's another light cruiser, probably.
The Slack Cruiser has dropped its uh, smoke. I'm going to go ahead and have the... I'm going to start throwing 11-inch shells at her. Continue to have the secondaries pepper this little torpedo boat for now. I need to pop it to normal to fire enough rounds for to dial in the range and aiming. What's going on over here? Can't. Oh, that's a torpedo boat. That's the one I've been firing at. This one. Well, it looks like my secondaries are targeting both of the torpedo boats. Apparently. No, it was just lined up. Okay. Well, that one then. That's fine. And for some reason, Durban is falling behind. Not because of damage, apparently. Shift fire to this heavy cruiser over here for mains. It's really low speed on those light cruisers. The heavy cruiser is 21.1. Boom, there's a nice hit on the on the terrible. which has few bulkheads, so she, it's a pretty big flooding hit on her, took some propulsion damage.
Even for 1890, that's some fairly light armoring for not a heavy cruiser, an armored cruiser. A not very armored cruiser. have taken a, a little bit of tower and funnel damage. I guess there's two different divisions, four total of torpedo boats. The initial one, I think that was Vixen here. So we have two undamaged torpedo boats. I think I better bang them up enough so that at least they slow down. Went back down into save, uh, save ammo. Apparently, my gunnery officer doesn't like 3.1%, so he's holding fire for now. I think I'm okay with that. I'm going to use a little bit of 11 inch on these uh, torpedo boats, just at least until they get slowed down a little bit. Here's a nice pop. Didn't do very much for an 11 inch round onto a torpedo boat. Because uh, it was an overpin with HE at that. And there, that's better. That'll. That's smart. Okay, that, that's that's definitely going to take her down to a slower speed than my own. Let's give Banshee some of the same treatment, hopefully. Eventually.
Looks like every one of these torpedo boats only has one shot. I don't I mean I don't think they fired. They've never been close enough to. It says uh Oh, ammo torps reduced. So they're little one shot uh one shot ships. One shot that I much prefer they never get a chance to make. It's corpus speed, 16.7. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to turn the mains off again. These have all been slowed down to a lower speed than myself. Shift uh, shift to three inches to Cobra here. And this is exactly the situation, you know, as I was designing the BB, this is exactly the situation I was talking about when I said, you know, want a fair number of secondaries facing aft. But then <clears throat> the game differentiates, of course. There's two different three inch here because the game differentiates between casemate and secondaries. Different categories. Doesn't say it here, but this icon is for the casemate. This icon, which is slightly different with that little gun shield in front of it, that's for the secondaries per se. Do have a lot less ammo for secondaries because there's a lot less secondary guns. Most of my case made three inchers are kind of in this, you know, there's four three inch guns in here. Those are casemate guns. This is there I think there was some facing forward that are counted as casemate guns. And of course those aren't firing. These don't have a great firing arc. I don't think that they're bearing. It's primarily this gun here, this gun here. Those are secondaries. And then there is a, a casemate gun here, but I'm not sure it's actually bearing either. Then there's some, some three inch right up here on the top of the aft tower. I really don't remember if those are which those are. Okay, those are counted as secondaries. Yeah, there's the difference. Those are the secondaries there in yellow. And those are the casemate. Of all those casemates, it's really only these two right here, just aft of the funnel, that are actually firing. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to turn enough that I get a whole lot more 3 inch pouring in on this torpedo boat by unmasking all those casemate guns in the side of the ship. I 
should greatly increase the volume of fire. Now notice that torpedo boat, that torpedo boat, uh, Cobra turned with me. He didn't continue boring on in to get within torpedo release range. Why did he do that? I think because the AI is honoring this threat of my own torpedo. And I, and I get that torpedo capability just by that little aft launcher I put in the stern. And that's what I was talking about when I said I'm putting it on there not really to use, but as a deterrent. I think Cobra just got deterred right there. And keep turning a little bit to keep all those uh, port side casemate guns, three inches, in their firing arc. Okay, I'm going to shift secondaries to Electra. And we're getting close enough now, I'm going to put the mains back on Terrible. Twelve percent, thirteen percent, and it, from a torpedo perspective, I don't really mind if Terrible gets inside point nine kilometer range because it does not have torpedoes. But of course, you know we're getting down to ranges now where her eight-inch guns uh, could very well penetrate. like that. Probably should not have given her such a flat target to shoot at. Alright, I'm just going to start shooting everything at Terrible here. There's a ricochet, nice. Okay, flooding's not great at the moment, but none of these compartments are destroyed. Even even my cadets will eventually get that dewatered. I mean, yeah, we got cadets, but so do the so do the British. That's where everybody starts, as we all know. Terrible's had enough. going to kind of ease around here. I want to make sure Terrible doesn't limp off and save herself. Come on. There we go. Okay. Looks like Durbin's going to have to be our next customer. Perhaps. Uh, 
It's an interesting maneuver. Okay. Oh. That's a little unusual for AI design ships. Maximum bulkheads. 17.5 knots. It's a pretty, pretty tight turning circle, though. With the exception of the main belt, it's actually better armored than the heavy uh, armored cruiser. 1.3 all around. And how big a spread can she fire? Yeah one underwater tube in each direction so only one in any individual salvo which I think is pretty much the case for all ships in 1890 let's go back down to save we've gone through about uh, I think two-thirds 110 per gun, so we started with 220 rounds. Yeah, fired 78. Only had 10 hits, but we've done almost 3,000 damage with the mains. Can't gripe about that. How about the 3 inch? We've done 1,000 damage with the casemates. 1,200 damage with the secondaries, which admittedly are getting low. However, we're down to an hour and 11, so I don't think we're going to run out of ammo. I think I'm okay with dropping speed a little bit just to help out accuracy. Four inch guns for the mains on the light cruiser. Yeah, look at that. So I've been firing HE this entire time. I've done a total of about 5,200 damage directly with the actual hits. But the fires they've started have done an additional 4,200 damage. I think Banshee needs some attention here.
Boom, there you go. Yeah, Banshee's had enough. She's going to go to the back of the line. Or not. No. Okay. Hey, champion, how you doing? Turn enough, make sure I get uh, all my casemates to bear, as well as the forward turret, main turret, 11 inch. was another uh, even when the HE gets blocked which is basically the HE equivalent of a ricochet uh, for AP even then it still got that chance to get a fire started Okay, shift to the next threat. Well, I may have let her get a little close. Come back up in speed. Yeah, that'll help. So will that. Durbin's had enough for the moment. Penelope's turn.
slow back down to cruise. Smack. Let's see how long Fearless remains such. Uh oh. Fire control damaged. That's not so hot. Didn't prevent that hit though. Or that one. Oh, she might go. 12, 13, 11. And looks like she's going to hold right there at about 11%. Hit her again. No? All right. Shift secondaries to Electra here. Secondary tower is not completely red. Maybe I should have armored the superstructure a little bit more with this type of battle in mind.
Well, all the cruisers have had enough. They just forgot to tell the torpedo boats to come with them. Hopefully that's enough to... No. Yeah, maximum bulkheads on the torpedo boats. <laughs> I think one of the a contributing cause to how you know destroyers and torpedo boats tend to have so much survivability. You know, they get damaged pretty easily, but it takes a long time to actually get sinking damage on them. Is finally. It's the first torpedo boat that actually sank, I think. Is the uh, compartmentalization. I think it just like scales linearly, right? You get the same, you know, maximum compartments on a battleship is the same as maximum compartments on a torpedo boat, right? They're honeycombed with the same number, you know, the same amount of uh, interior divisions. And if you think about it, it really can't be that way. You know, Weissenberg happens to be mini, not max. But this diagram is the same either way. Right? You have these subdivisions, and at max um, bulkheads, every one of these is uh, supposed to be self-contained, where it's got enough watertight division that flooding in this compartment doesn't spill over fore and aft. And even with few, it doesn't go up into the... That's a separate issue, though. That's not what I'm talking about. On a torpedo boat, you look at these compartments, right? On a battleship, like, people can, like, stand up and walk around, and you can put things in these compartments, whatever it is. The, the galley, the, the mess decks, birthing compartments, magazines, whatever. On a 200-ton ship, you know, a guy's got to, like, curl up into a fetal position to even fit inside here. <laughs> that was pretty good smack. Oh, there goes Cobra. So I kind of think that, you know, maximum compartmentalization on the destroyers and torpedo boats may be just overly unrealistic in its effect. Even if it's got as, as good a compartmentalization as can be built into such a little hull, It's not going to be like this. Maybe it would be just for a simple fix rather than complicated modeling. I kind of think maybe it would be reasonable to just limit the designs such that TBs and destroyers at least the smaller ones in these eras maybe should only max out at uh, standard bulkheads and then the larger later destroyers when they get up to two three thousand tons maybe maybe they can max out at many Just as a quick dirty fix. I'm not saying that's the optimal solution.
Now we're going to get enough fire on. Who was that? Champion before time runs out. Which light cruisers kind of got themselves sorted and decided to come back. These aft secondaries are out of ammo, but still tons of ammo for the casemates. Good pop. Well, these these main guns have achieved 19% uh, uh, accuracy over the course of the entire battle. 9,500 damage. I don't know if that includes fires from the 33 fires that they've set. Uh, it does not. Because the 9549 damage for the uh, 11 inch guns here plus the 3 inch equals the 1325 damage total. And then the fire damage is on top of that. Depending upon whether the AI is trying to attack or if it's just trying to run away, sometimes the battle ends right at expiration, sometimes it doesn't. So I don't know what's going to happen here in 10 seconds. 10 game seconds. That's it. Okay. Well, we sank five ships four of which were torpedo boats, but we got the uh, the armored cruiser, which, you know, the centerpiece of their force, and put pretty significant damage on the light cruisers. Looks like medium for champion and whoever that was. And medium, or light rather, for Durban and, you know, fearless probably. Didn't take that much fire. 1100 victory points, vice 13. I think that's a pretty good start for having been ganged up on by nine ships. I'll take that. And there you have it. We'll press on into the next, uh, next month in 1890 uh, during the next episode. Thank you for watching.